Hi, hello, welcome. I previously released a video discussing the effect saturated fats have on muscle mitochondrial function. And I mentioned that the same group of researchers took their findings and decided to look at the effect unsaturated fat has on mitochondrial function. In this video, I'd like to show you what they found and that's what we'll do. But you may not be entirely certain about the significance of a functional mitochondria. In broad terms, mitochondrial function is highly involved in diabetes risk, a cancer risk, and many other substantial diseases. So the idea being that if you have healthy mitochondria, your risk of these diseases manifesting is lower. So no doubt I'm glossing over thousands of studies that introduce substantial nuance to the conversation, but I think most researchers would consider the health of the mitochondria to be extremely important, however it fits into the equation. So, mitochondrial function, as we will investigate it here, will be defined by the amount of DNA damage that has occurred. I'll explain that more in a moment, and the amount of oxidative stress caused to the cell. Again, I'll explain that further, and how much ATP, or cellular energy, is produced for the cell. On top of that, in the last video, we discussed the viability of the muscle cells, meaning how well do they survive when exposed to a substance. In this case, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, or a combination of the two. That said, let's see how unsaturated fats differ from saturated fats, if they do at all. I started things off last time with a look at DNA damage, so we'll begin here again for tradition's sake. If you aren't familiar, your cells house DNA, which is the building material for your genes, and that DNA is found in the nucleus of your cells. About 99% of your DNA is kept there, and the minority of your DNA is also kept inside your mitochondria. So breaking, damaging mitochondrial DNA leads to abnormalities in the mitochondrion, because the proteins produced from those genes will not function properly. So this is a really basic explanation, but it'll be enough for us to continue. The first piece of data repeats experiments from the last study wherein the researchers put muscle cells in isolation on a cell dish and supplied these cells with the requisite nutrients to live. They also added either saturated fat palmitate, which we saw last video, or the addition of the unsaturated fat oleate, or both. They increased the concentration in a stepwise fashion and then measured the amount of mitochondrial DNA damage. The dark bar is the saturated fat, and the white bar with the horizontal lines is the mixture of both fats. And by the process of elimination, the middle bar is the oleate alone. What we can see is a significant increase in DNA damage with the addition of saturated fat, and that effect increased with increasing concentration up to a point. This is consistent with the data from the previous study. However, that effect was not experienced when the muscle cells were exposed to unsaturated fat. And there was a protective effect of unsaturated fat when the two fats were combined. This is really cool data because it implicates saturated fat significantly in causing DNA damage and also shows that pairing that saturated fat with unsaturated fat ameliorates the effect. That is too cool. Next, the researchers wanted to know the effect on its cell energy, which is measured as ATP, adenosine triphosphate, produced from the mitochondria of the cell. Same conditions as the previous experiment, exposure to saturated fat, unsaturated, or both. And here, again, we see that the saturated fat, palmitate, reduced cell energy levels, yet unsaturated fat, or the combination, did not. I likely don't need to spell it out for you, but a drastic reduction in cell energy is not great for the cell because it means there are fewer ATP molecules available to be used for the cell energy processes, like keeping the cell alive, let alone muscle contraction, which uses substantial energy. All right, let's look at one more measure of mitochondrial function. Oxidative stress, which is measured as reactive oxygen species, is an indication of overall stress on the cell because reactive oxygen species, abbreviated ROS, are molecules that are considered unstable and they tear away at other molecules in the cell, causing damage, if overabundant. 
So the more ROS, typically the worse off the cell is. So again, we have our palmitate saturated fat, our oleate unsaturated fat, and our mixture of the saturated and unsaturated fats. Yet again, there's only an increase in ROS or ROS when palmitate is added alone. This is interesting in its own right, but the researchers took things a bit further, trying to figure out the mechanisms. But I'll cover that in another piece of content, or check out my full-length video breaking this study down to the nitty-gritty detail. Up to this point, uh, we see that saturated fat increases DNA damage in mitochondria, reduces cell energy levels, as well as increases oxidative stress. Yet none of those effects are seen when saturated fat is combined with unsaturated fat, and certainly not when consuming unsaturated fat alone. Now, I mentioned before that cell viability or the ability for the cells to stay alive was something they tested as well. So, how did that work out? Well, the muscle cells were again exposed to saturated fat, unsaturated fat or both, in increasing concentrations. And then the researchers measured the number of cells that survived over a period of time, something like 24 hours. Again, with the palmitate being the saturated fat, with increasing concentrations, generally, there were fewer and fewer cells that survived. Admittedly, there is some discrepancy in this experiment, so it is up to you to decide if you believe the data. Granted, that is always the case, but especially the case here. However, assuming that we believe the trend that saturated fat kills more cells than unsaturated fat, the researchers wanted to clue in on a mechanistic point of view. Although this is something I'll likely cover in more depth, I thought I'd cover this one mechanism on cell viability because I did on the previous video as well. Okay, so we're looking at caspase levels here. What is caspase? What a great question I asked myself, pretending you asked me. Caspase is a protease, a protein that cuts other proteins. Uh, it will interact with other proteins and slice them to be, well, generally non-functional. Uh, if many caspases are released into the cell, the cell will have massive damage to the protein population and die. That's the parallel between the previous experiment and this one. Now, caspase alone is no threat, but its cleaved version is the active version of the protein. If caspase is cleaved, it will be activated to cut proteins within the muscle cell. So we find ourselves in a similar position wherein the cells are exposed to palmitate, oleate, or both, at increasing concentrations. The smudges correspond to the amount of protein. The darker the smudge, the wider the smudge, well, then the more protein is present. There's more to it than that, but again, I'd encourage that you check out the longer video on this study for a better education on how to read all this. But for now, that's good enough. As we can see, the amount of total caspase seems to reduce at higher concentrations of palmitate exposure. And maybe predictably, the amount of cleaved caspase or activated caspase increases. Similar results are not seen when looking at the unsaturated fat exposure or the combination treatment. That all means that the condition with increased cell death is also the condition with increased cleave caspase, which would suggest these cells are dying, at least partly due to caspase activation. So all in all, taking all of this together, this data suggests that saturated fat increases mitochondrial dysfunction, yet unsaturated fat reduces or eliminates this negative effect, even when saturated fat is still present. It also shows that muscle cells do not survive well in a high saturated fat environment, which is likely mediated partly, if not fully, by caspase activity. So does this mean that you should avoid saturated fat if you want a healthy muscle? Well, let's discuss that, along with some of the other nuances in the mechanisms. Or if you're interested in how saturated fat affects insulin sensitivity, increasing risk of diabetes in muscle, I'll speak to you there. And on your way home, don't get mugged by a saturated fat. See ya.